Hello and thank you for joining us from wherever you are. We are coming to you live from our studios in Kokumlemle on digital address GA0992539. Our top stories this hour. More coronavirus cases, lockdown lifted and mixed reactions to government's decision. 1,042 people are living with coronavirus, which has killed nine people so far. And as government lifts restrictions on movement, there are mixed reactions, including those who think we may want to reverse. This afternoon, we're asking your thoughts about it as government's meeting with the Ghana Medical Association is underway. We have a poll on Twitter. Tell us what you think. So what's happening in public places after the lockdown was lifted? We're live in major markets in Accra and the Ashanti region to find out. Also coming up, we are live in Europe as part of that continent also begin easing restrictions on movement. We compare the basis for these decisions being taken by authorities. So the poll is still running on Twitter. What are your thoughts about easing the restrictions in Ghana? Join us on DSTV 421, GoTV 144, and on YouTube, where we are streaming live. You can join us with your thoughts and opinions on 0540 My name is Gifty Andopia. This is The Pulse. Please be my guest. So there you have it, 1,042, that's our case count at the moment. 1,042 people in Ghana at the moment are living with coronavirus. Mind you, there are several tests being taken on a daily basis, and there are the regional breakdown as well, and there are several categories. Nine people have died so far. Well, in Upper West, we're looking at eight people. In Upper East, eight. In the Northeast, two. In the Northern Region, is risen from 10 to 11. What about the Ashanti region, one of the first regions to be in lockdown with, along with Accra? 62 cases. The eastern region is quickly following in the pace of the Ashanti region. 51 in the last few weeks. In the central region, it started from one. We're looking at seven at the moment. Here in the greater Accra region, call it the epicenter of coronavirus in Ghana, 882. Western region has recorded one case so far, but of course, if the tests go on, we start to know what's happening there. The Volta region had no case at all. As we speak, there are nine. So that's just to refresh your mind and give you an idea what's happening as far as the figures. Now the national capital here in Accra and the Ghana's and Ghana's biggest city, Kumasi, have bounced back to life today following government's decision to lift the three-week partial lockdown. As you know, the lockdown was necessitated by the increase in cases of COVID-19 being recorded here in Ghana. Currently, the country's case, like I told you, is standing at 1,042. But addressing the nation yesterday, President Akufado outlined his reasons for arriving at that decision to ease the restrictions on movement. The decision to impose restrictions on movement was backed by the data at hand. And our next course of action, again, is backed by data and by science. In view of our ability to undertake aggressive contact tracing of infected persons, the enhancement of our capacity to test, the expansion in the numbers of our treatment and isolation centers, our better understanding of the dynamism of the virus, the ramping up of our domestic capacity to, to produce our own personal protective equipment, sanitizers and medicine. The modest success is chalked in containing the spread of the virus in Accra and Kumasi and the severe impact on the poor and vulnerable. I've taken the decision to lift the three-week-old restriction 
on movements in the greater Accra metropolitan area and Kaswa, and the greater Kumasi metropolitan area and its contiguous districts. With effect from 1 a.m. on Monday, 20th April, I must make it clear at the outset that lifting these restrictions does not mean we're letting our guard down. All other measures are still firmly in place for the avoidance of doubt. The earlier measures announced on Wednesday, 15th March, which have been extended, are still very much in force and have not been relaxed. I'm demanding even greater adherence to these measures. In here, I'm referring to the suspension of all public gatherings, including conferences, workshops, funerals, parties, nightclubs, drinking spots, beaches, festivals, political rallies, religious activities, and sporting events. All educational facilities, private and public, are to remain closed. Businesses and other workplaces can continue to operate observing staff management and workplace protocols with a view to achieving social distancing and hygiene protocols. So that decision has been met with mixed reactions. Some have been jubilating over the opportunity to finally get to move around unhindered. Others are also questioning the rationale. Some of you have also been reacting to this on our social media handles. And you can still send in your message to our WhatsApp line 0540-109009. I'll read it out uh, to the rest of the world very shortly. But yesterday on the lockdown show with MFA Apau, Information Minister Kojo Opong Kruma gave us further details on government's decision to lift this ban. Well, um, at the time, the restrictions or the second level of restrictions in Accra, Greater Kumasi and Contiguous districts were being introduced. We said they were being introduced because we had recorded cases. Okay. That was never the justification. Yeah. I recall the president said it to explain it over and over again that a restriction or a set of restrictions on their own without more achieves almost nothing. It's only a delay mm -hmm. because once you lift, you won't achieve much. Okay. And that the set of restrictions or what you call the lockdown were necessary to afford the government and the health authorities an opportunity to do something. What is that something? To do an enhanced tracing and testing program of at-risk populations so that we could get ahead of the virus. Tonight, if you listen to the president, he explains exactly what we needed to do about four things. We needed to have clarity on what our infection rate or what our positivity rate is. Mm -hmm. And you notice that in many jurisdictions where they were not able to set themselves up early or catch it early, by the time they they start examining what is going on. The positivity rate or the uh, uh, infection rate is pretty high. A lot of people who will be getting it or who will now be accounting for that have high viral loads showing up in the hospitals. The hospitals are not able con to contain all of it. So what we sought to do was to impose these restrictions and get ahead of it. So try and determine what is the positivity or the infection rate. Try and understand the dynamism of the virus. Try and understand the geographic footprint and establish current and potential hotspots um, of the virus as well. And these were the elements that go into trying to get ahead of it. Now clearly we know, and if you look at the data, at least as at the age 34 mm -hmm. data, if you look at the data, our infection rate was about 1.37. The president up, um, updates us um, with the latest numbers. And I'm sure of, uh, you heard me speaking to the health service team. That says that they are quickly updating um, the platforms as well. But as at that time, you would notice that our, our infection rate, while the um, composite was 1.37, as at that time, if you disaggregate it, routine surveillance, that's those who were prior to lockdown falling sick and coming to hospital was about 2.25 percent okay. out of the 15,000 people who said we have symptoms check us 2.25 then those that we quarantined was about almost six percent but those that we went out into the at-risk populations we set a target of about 10,000 we've done about 60,000 now and there's still backlog that they are trying to process it's 0.86 percent at least as are these numbers we have clarity of what our positivity or our infection rate is. On top of that, what is good is that the majority, and the president explains, the majority, the overwhelming majority of people that we are finding are people who are not sick. 
they have been exposed but they are not sick. Why is that important? If you don't have a robust system for early testing to find people, go aggressively and get ahead of the virus, you will wait and people will fall sick and come to the hospital. That's when your health structure gets number. overwhelmed. And that's what I was explaining, the data from New York, um, the whole of America, about one million beds, and they were projecting that the way, the way it was about going, they were going to get about two million people in the hospitals because they had waited. The, 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 the good thing about what we've done is that because we are finding asymptomatic people, and that's what the president talks about, they are not sick, many of them don't even require hospital care. If you continue with this, you would then be able to find people who are asymptomatic and therefore give them the treatment and they don't have to get into that category of critically ill. At the same time, the third thing you need to do is to introduce measures that will slow down your rate of spread. So if your rate of spread is at about 0 0.86, at least using the A34 set that we had, what are the measures that you think can sustainably, what are the sustainable measures that you think can slow down the rate of spread? Mm -hmm. Different options. There's total lockdown of the entire country. There's partial lockdown of some parts of the country where you think the at-risk populations are to go after them. Then there are restrictions. Beneath the restrictions, they have public compliance with the preventive etiquette, so social distancing, wash your hands, etc. That is being maintained. The restrictions are also being maintained. Borders are remaining closed. Close for another two weeks. Um, uh, public gatherings, social gatherings, conferences, all of those ones are no, all being... So no church. Still. No church, no mosque, no big conferences, all of that kind. Even for businesses, and if you oh, listen to right. the text, mm -hmm. because, you see, you have a list of options, right? Yeah. As I said, the basic one is public compliance with the um, uh, preventive etiquette. In fact, today, if you are following what's happening um, on the global platforms, in, in America, they are saying that if public compliance had started earlier than it did, they could have even cut their rates by about 50%. Okay. So public compliance alone, as from about the, um, you take from the 6th of March, when we were celebrating independence and the president kept saying, don't do this, don't, from that time alone, cuts into our potential 0 0.86 by a lot. I'm not using the American standard of 50%, but I'm just saying it cuts it by a lot. Then you come to the next level, restrictions. Borders are remaining closed. Schools are remaining closed. Uh, public gatherings are remaining. All of those restrictions still exist. In the markets, we're going to have better policing in the markets to ensure social distancing. In public transport, better policing to ensure social uh, distancing. In corporate organizations or in businesses, you heard the president talk about the fact that they need to rationalize numbers. Because you are still saying that people, as many people as possible should stay at home. Okay. So you have to rationalize all of it. That again cuts the 0 0.86 into, you know, uh, severe. Then you add to it the next layer of and even enhanced testing program. And you heard the president talk about uh, about 100 different points, different layers that we are adding to our testing capability to ensure that what? We're able to uh, um, trace more, test more, and ensure that while you are cutting into the potential infection rate, you are also finding a lot more people or the majority of your people in the early asymptomatic bracket so that you can assist them. And then you don't need to have people uh, you know, getting ill and in hospital. So okay. this is what the science leads us uh, to come to, and that's why we're here tonight. So uh, there's a directive that we're all supposed to wear masks once we are going out there. Uh, very good. But you know that there were some social distancing protocols that we're supposed to adhere to. Clearly, most people did not um, adhere to it. How are we going to ensure that we all wear masks starting tomorrow? So, first of all, if you say most people, I may have a challenge with you. You know, I don't like this over generalizations, but, but of course, a good number of people, a good number, a good number of people, that. were not observing the social distancing. But listen, take a cry. If you had six million people all over Accra not observing social distancing at all, mingling, the moment you impose some of these restrictions. Um, you, you would observe that a good cut into that is happening. And if you had, is it 500,000 people or 200,000 people? Yes, it's a significant number, but compare that to 6 million. Now, your question really is about how do we police it and ensure that it's going to happen. The role of the police and the military is now going to change. Oh. They are not now going to be enforcing a lockdown, but they are going to be assisting us and ensure that some of these other restrictions are adhered to.
I'll tell you what the G Director General of the Ghana Health Service is saying. But right now, some of you have been sending your comments on the lockdown. I'll take quick ones on that and then we'll go to the Ghana Health uh, Service. It says, what the president, it says, if you're a president and you follow Ghanaians, you can't do anything better. The problem is Ghana, of Ghana uh, journalists, some are uh, not asking the right question. Okay, well, well, you have some strong words. We'll skip that one because we don't accept insults uh, on the show. But you say what the president has done is the best. It's from Christopher Conto. Christopher, thanks for sending your message. Next time, please do not add insults. Um, this one says, hello, Gifty. I still don't understand why those of us that came into Ghana from other African countries on the 20th of March were not contacted to be tested because they said those who came in within that period are supposed to be tested. Report yourself to any Ghana immigration service. They are asking that um, landlords, anybody who traveled within 3rd and the 20th, I think 22nd or 20th of March, should make it themselves available. If you haven't had any call from the immigration service, do make yourself available. Let's go through this so we don't infect other people and those who are infected are, are also treated. This one says uh, from Nyonja Bright in Sunyai says the government can propound theories and ascribe to any scientific reasons for lifting this lockdown. In fact, it failed to plan the vulnerable, to plan for the vulnerable, and having realized the difficulty feeding them, had no choice than to lift the ban. Otherwise, how can governments that cannot provide simple masks for its health workers not be interested in preventive measures? Well, Bright, thanks for sending in that message. What is the what is the lifting the what is the what is in the lifting of the ban when cases continue increasing i beg the president to re-examine the issue carefully you don't add your name but thank you for sending the messages as well let's see quick two last one and then we go to the general the director general of the ghana health service this one says it's from uh zabzugu from obed uh nuesan obed in zabzugu Tam tamale uh zabzugu in the northern region he says i think the president may be right or wrong for lifting the restrictions of movements in Accra and kumasi however if you you think it's dangerous to go out stay at home whilst those who think they can't take the risk to go out do so let's not give too much pressure to the president because our feedback always serves as the basis for his next address leadership is difficult you know thank you for sending in Obed your message very touching message you are bringing in as well he said this one says please unemployed graduate teachers are suffering from the lockdown uh, please any assurance well the lockdown has been lifted so there are no excuses there, I should say. All right, let's go on. Although schools are still closed, I must say. I'll come back to your messages, but the Director General of the Ghana Health Service is revealing that the infection curve is already flattening. This is an indication, he says, that the rate of infection is slowing down. Speaking earlier today on news desk, Mr. Abwaje, also Dr. Abwaje, I should say, also said that the 18,000 persons awaiting results are being monitored whilst others are in quarantine. I believe so. I'm sure you have seen the, the um, what we have played on the on the on our website. And when we do the daily page, uh, as you can see, it's not just a trigger. And so the, it's making progress. We only need to intensify. Uh, whilst we test it down, we need to ensure that. Uh, more public health measures are put in place to not only get flattening but also start bringing it down. That's why the special uh, lesson of the lockdown and all the public health measures are going to take place probably at a higher and more intensified uh, way to ensure that uh, we bring, we contain the disease and bring it to an end. Processes are in place to bring more labs. Uh, up uh, into into the system like the Tamale one, uh, KCC is assisting the Tamale center to be upgraded to be able to do the testing. There's a pong Tamale one, so all those ones are being uh, brought in. The enhanced surveillance will go on. I mean, when you do the lockdown, start to now, not after the lockdown, people are working, they are very safe. So, testing takes place wherever we find the people including workplaces, and also targeting, like I said this morning, targeting really high risk people, people who have the opportunity to come in contact with a lot of people and so ensure that they are protected and they are also, uh, in that way, they also, if they have the draw spread to many people. So these are all a few strategies that could be enhanced 
including the fact that all regions, they are divided into three, those without cases, we do enhanced surveillance, um, those with cases, we do enhanced surveillance with contact tracing, and places where we think uh, the, the cases are high. We will intensify all the things we are doing, things that in a different approach. Because everything we are doing under lockdown situation will continue really in the lockdown situation, like I mentioned. Well, what do the experts say? Biologists at the Kumasi Center for Collaborative Research is calling for stronger surveillance uh, measures to prevent escalation of COVID-19 cases. Dr. Michael Ousu says the lifting up of the lockdown will make no impact if Ghanaians misconstrue it for relaxation of surveillance protocols. He tells my colleague, Ohim Interia, of our health desk, security operatives should be maintained on the ground for continued enforcement of preventive measures. The approach we are using is, 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 is okay and is what we call the heavy restriction and flexible approach or what others will call it the dance and then um, the hammer approach. So in the hammer approach, you look out for hotspots. You move in strongly and put in all your interventions. You do active testing, contact tracing, searching for the people, isolating them, containing and treatment, which is what we have done over the time. We have done this for three weeks. We understand that the prevalence of community cases is a little below 1% in both Ashanti and then also in Accra. So for me, it means that the burden of disease on the ground is quite good. And the, all the 1,042 we have, practically, uh, I expect that the movement have been restricted, which means that they are either isolated or they are under mandatory quarantine. So they are not moving about to infect populations. For me, that is one thing we have achieved by doing this. And normally at this point, after three weeks of being in home under lockdown, you expect people to now go about their routine activities to regain some losses in terms of what they have lost. But then the surveillance measures will have to be stronger than before. Uh, the social distancing must be practiced more stronger than before. The hygienic practices must be more stronger than before. So your measures in terms of what you put on the ground before you ease restriction has to be even much more stronger than what was done before. So theoretically, yes, it's good. But the surveillance measures and all the precautions is what we'll, we have to ensure that people adhere to. Else, uh, people go by their normal duties and relax these measures. My fear is that we may begin to have an increase in cases coming up. When are we likely to, to hit that stage? It depends largely on the behavior of, of us citizens and also the policy directions of government. For instance, from the statements the president made, I think that there need to be more clarification from the information ministry. The first is that I don't expect nose marks to be encouraged. I expect nose marks to be mandatory, that everywhere anybody goes, before you go to a trotro, a public transport, Every gathering you go, the first thing is that you must be in a nose mask and the police must ensure that whoever goes out has a nose mask. Mandatory wearing of nose masks, he says. Dr. Wusu, who is also a lecturer at the Department of Medical Diagnostics at KNUSD, wants all Ghanaians to be compelled, like you heard him, to wear face masks. He says strict enforcement and compliance are key to winning this fight against coronavirus. In town, people are, I see people moving about as if the disease is over. The disease is not over. The disease is in the system and it's trying to take hold of the system. And when it gets hold of the system, then it will start knocking the susceptible people, those who are old and chronic illness at random. And then you begin to have a spike in hospital cases. This for me is a very crucial moment for us, where if we don't put in good measures, we cannot do contact tracing anymore. Contact tracing will lose its relevance. Our best bet is to stay at the hospitals waiting for people to come. And by the time you begin to get there, it will be a difficult thing for us to manage as a country. So I think that if we have to still slow the spread, then we have to ensure that the social distancing and all the accompanying measures will become an enforce. We have to enforce it, not to give it for people as an option and to just encourage, but to move falsely and ensure people adhere to this. In that way, we can still succeed in slowing the spread whilst people go by the economy. And then I also expect that if we put in good surveillance measures, as the disease begins to rise, 
we should lock down as and when the disease begins to check. I mean, people begin to have experience. We didn't think that lockdown is over. No, no, no. We have we can live with this for the next six to twelve months. So the precautions now should be more stronger, even than before. And the police and the security must ensure. You're still watching the polls with me, Gifty and up here. So what are your thoughts about the lockdown? We're running a poll, like I said, on Twitter. Get on there and vote and let's see what your thoughts are. You can also keep sending us messages on all our social media platform, platforms, including our WhatsApp number. When I return from this break, Elton Brobe, our presidential affairs correspondent, will join me on the meeting between the Ghana Medical Association, the TUC, and President Akufado, which ended a while ago at the Jubilee House. Do stay tuned for the details. Welcome back to the show. Many thanks for staying with us. And I was asking you earlier to go on our Twitter handle to be a part of the poll we're running. What are your thoughts about the lockdown? Well, the votes, uh, the poll is already ongoing. We have about 22 hours left on it. But of course, we don't have 22 hours uh, left here on the show. So if you want us to get your thoughts quickly, as quickly as possible, you can get on uh, that platform and take a look at it. We we'll list. Uh, we we'll give you some of the reasons that President Kufado gives uh, for lifting uh, the lockdown, and then we ask you whether or not you agree uh, with the decision to ease the restrictions. All right. So once you see me wearing a mask, then you know that I'm uh, talking to somebody in the studio. Was the decision motivated by science, by the economics, or even by politics? We've been engaging the thoughts of some of you, uh, some scientists, some economists, and political analysts on this and the implications going forward. Now, as you already know, President Kufado has been meeting with members of the Ghana Medical Association on the way forward. Presidential correspondent Elton Bobe monitored that meeting, and he joins me in the studio with more. Elton, you're welcome to the show. Thank I wanted to start my conversation with you with a question that I got um, concerning the Ghana Medical Association. Okay, I got it here. It's from Geoffrey. Geoffrey is texting from Takrade. He says, did the GMA agree to the lifting of the ban? A lot of people enter the country illegally than those who were arrested by the security personnel. G GMA. So I can answer this in a way. Mm. The meeting was held in two parts. The first one was the introductory part where the media was allowed to participate. Right. The second one was a closed door session. Uh, details of that I don't have yet, okay. uh, even though I'm told that the GMA has some concerns with their decision to uh, unlock uh, some of the areas, Greater Kumasi, Greater Accra and Kaswa. Mm. But the GMA president, Dr. Frank Ankobia, uh, told the media after the meeting that once the president has spoken, they have no option than to back it. So they will support the president directive going forward now mm. to ensure that uh, we are out of this uh, this pandemic as soon as possible. President Okufuado, uh, before the media was asked to work out, mm. justified the decision to lift the ban uh, in Accra, Kumasi and Kaswa. Mm. Now for him, before arriving at, at, at that particular decision, he was saddled with four main issues. Mm -hmm. The economic aspects of the lockdown, mm -hmm. the social aspect of it, the cultural aspect of it. And as a president, he needed to balance the equation so that there is some kind of, uh, so some kind of acceptance with his decision. Mm -hmm. But more particularly, about the economy of about 80% of our people who are in the informal sector and mm. the fact that they live from hand to mouth. And these are people who have been complaining about the impact uh, the lockdown was having on them. Mm. So he looked at all of these issues and the fact that we've done over 60,000 uh, testing. Uh, we've recorded 1,045 positive cases. Yeah. The recovery rate is about 99. Uh, we are also observing people who are on admission and the fact that we also have 18,000 samples, uh, test results to come in. Mm. So they have looked at the, the shape of the virus and how it spread. Uh, they appear to have a handle on it. So that was the reason why government decided to you know, lift the, the lockdown on these areas, more particularly to look at the economy, which from the analysis of some experts is actually bleeding at this particular moment. The GMA, will not directly speak to us on whether or not they are in favor or against the government decision to unlock these areas. All they said was that the president has spoken. They, as an association, 
they've already backed it and they'll continue to back it until the pandemic is out of the country okay now the, another group that met with the president today was the trade union um, mm. um congress. congress and by the trade union congress i believe that the gprtu uh is is, is, is a part of the trade union yeah, Congress, it's right mm -hmm. okay i said that because i have a question again mm -hmm. and i'll ask you based on the questions that you know people are sending this one says the trotters have already started packing the passengers what happened to social distancing they should be checked what is the tuc's position so this did not come up directly as a question I regarding know. the really? trotter and then the commercial uh, driver but the tuc as a body according to Ms. Ayaba, what they've done is to conduct uh, a research or a study mm -hmm. into the economic impacts of the lockdown. Mm -hmm. And even though the, the, the results is yet to be 100% ready for publication, what they've seen so far is quite devastating, especially for businesses and for people who have jobs. According to thousands of people within these three weeks that the country experienced a lockdown, thousands have lost their jobs. Businesses have collapsed. So uh, they were happy. Mm -hmm of the government decision to unlock these areas and that they will get their businesses to now begin to run. But they are more particular in looking at what government uh, have for them in terms of a uh, uh, package mm. to salvage people whose business have gone under right. and then to ensure that people who have lost their jobs are in a way you know, compensated or uh, the economy is such that it will be able to retool itself for the jobs that have been lost to be, you know, uh, reactivated. All right. Elton, thank you very much. And I believe that we'll get more from this meeting as we go along. Elton Brobe is presidential affairs correspondent here joining us from the Jubilee House, where he's been monitoring uh, meetings between President Kufuado, the Ghana, uh, the TUC, the Trade Union Congress, as well as the Ghana Medical Association. We're hearing that the Ghana Medical Association did have some concerns. Uh, have those concerns been addressed by the presidency? They say they support the president's decision. Well, hopefully we'll get a chance to speak to the GMA themselves so we can get a better understanding of what exactly um, is happening. But let's take, take a look at more of your question, uh, more of your thoughts that you're sharing with us. In the meantime, go on Twitter, follow the poll and be a part of it. This one says, please, I want to hear about what happened to the infected man who escaped from Tamale. Um, he's been arrested. He's been arrested by the police, I think, uh, the same day or the day after he was arrested. Uh, Zakaria sent this from the northern uh, region. Um, this one says, please, I think our destiny is in our own hands. You can stay home or you can go and die. Francis from Takrati. Francis, well, you won't die. Um, hopefully, you won't. Uh, most people, a lot more people have recovered. More people have recovered than those who have died and those who have got into critical condition. <clears throat> This one says, uh, this is a very long message, I'm not sure I'll be able to read everything, but you say our leaders are thinking of the next elections, not the next generation. This is just a way to find a way for the Electoral Commission to conduct uh, the new register. Politicians will always have their way and we as citizens will have our say. What a logic. When it was, when it was six, there was a ban on all public gatherings. 53 cases. 53 cases locked down, 1,042 lockdown lifted. Wow, have we given up on God so soon? No comment. This is from uh, HE on Upper West, per, Upper West Cerebral Spinal Meningitis, which has recorded over 200 cases. It's from Ghazi Ibn Idris from Tamale, who sends this one in. Thank you very much for sending this uh, message in. I'm going to take a look uh, very shortly at the poll on Twitter and how it is going. This one is coming from John. John says, I think the pressure on President Akufado is too much. We now, as president, should be wise to protect ourselves. Thank you for sending your message as well. Um, this is from Zebula by Emmanuel Spam. Emmanuel says, when the president unlock you, you can lock yourself back. Lock what has been, says, lock what has been o'clock. Emmanuel, thank you for that message. Interesting where you put it. This one, you don't add your name, you're a regular texter, says, how many Ghanaians are educated with the ability to think through issues, to appreciate the decision of the president? Well, you may underestimate people, but people do understand some of these things. We'll get on Twitter shortly. Ustaz Abdul Karim is sending this from Saboba. He says, the president took the decision, the president took the right decision to lift the lockdown. If you know you are still scared, 
please stay at home. Hashtag spread calm and not fear. Thank you for your message. I'm tempted to believe that government now has a better understanding on the impact of poverty and will now channel its attention there. Politicians will, should be well informed now about the legitimate issues which demand serious attention. I know government's decision was influenced by feeding the poor and vulnerable, even though it is based on science, as he says. So really, the reactions have been mixed, as we indicated earlier. Some of you think it has everything to do with politics. It has everything to do with, in your thoughts, governments trying to get the Electoral Commission to go on with the register. Some of you think that this is the best decision we have taken and that individuals should take responsibility but for protecting themselves by staying at home if they have no business at all being outside. Some of you are also seeing the impact you say it is having on businesses. Like Elton said, TUC believe this is a good thing. And you have read this message already that says the trotros are already packing. Please, the president indicated that, that if you are a public transport operator, that you would adhere to the earlier directives. You can't take more than four, for example, if that's what you used to take. You're supposed to take less than that, three or two. You can't take more than that. If you are doing so, you are breaching the presidential directives and you ought to be careful about it. This one is asking a question. I'm not sure I have it. Michelle Hammond, you say you want to know if all types of courts, uh, courts including criminal and civil cases, will resume as usual. We'll get some clarification from our court correspondent and let you know. So let's take a look also at some of the Facebook messages that have been coming in. This one is from Efo Michael Tagbo says the ban has been lifted to pave way for MPP primaries and the EC New Water Register compilation, I think. Well, Mr. Tabo, uh, what I can add to that is that uh, the president indicated that there is still a ban. The ban on public gatherings are still, is still in place. So political rallies, political meetings, uh, you know, that bring a lot of people together are also disallowed. So the NPP primaries, you know, as we know, has been um, um, uh, suspended, will not, will fit into the groups that are not supposed to be meeting under this uh, uh, directive by the president. <coughs> Good luck, Sterling is sending this one. He says, more cases are being recorded and restrictions lifted. Won't the cases be worse? Will there not be transfer of the virus to the clean regions? That's a question you're asking. I'm sorry, I don't have the answer. But certainly, those who ought to answer, I'm sure, have seen your message. Alhassan Salifu says, the president lifted the restriction just because of the voter ID registration. Oh, Mother Ghana. And there's also a question here that says, uh, why Udu Inu Safuseni says, why the rush to lift the ban? Uh, why the rush to lifting the, of the ban? I think it is premature to lift it. Now we are recording higher cases and you lift the ban. Why? So this is a very, uh, uh, this is a theme that's running through most of the messages that we're receiving. You're wondering why we're having so many cases yet uh, we're having to lift the ban. This one is asking, please, if someone wants to access some of the money dedicated to help businesses, how can the person access it? Peter, you sent this question from Dodo. I think that the minister answered it um, yesterday. I'm not quite sure what the answer is. I think he indicated that the money, the 600,000, the thing that's been dedicated to this will be available uh, in a couple, a couple of months, I think a month or two from now. Uh, do check on our YouTube link our youtube link we have the video running on our youtube link from lockdown yesterday you can check on our youtube link and have a look at it as well but i think the money they said will be available for people to you know start applying towards it in a month or two um government uh right you're asking about napco but i don't really have answers for napco questions this one says i think interregional movement lockdown must be introduced as soon as possible to avoid the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. You don't add your name, you only say you are inspector. Inspector, you're texting from Axim. Thank you for your message as well. This one says, Nana made a beautiful decision on lifting the lockdown ban yesterday. It is from Ken Silas, who is texting from Dunkwa. Onofen, Ken, thank you for your message as well. 
Alvin is texting from Afienya, says, what does it mean for residents in the outskirts of major cities? Will the easing of the lockdown be in our favor? Well, it's really up to you. The fact that you should not necessarily, you should you shouldn't find yourself among groups among you know ma masses of people when you really don't have a business out there but if you have business to do certainly the way has been paved for you to go ahead and have it done this one says we are more exposed to the virus than before the president should consider reconsider his decision for opening the lockdown um, the president did a good job by lifting the lockdown. The president did it with, in consultation with stakeholders. This is coming from um, Wofinga there. Well, these are some of the messages you're sending through. We'll do more of that as we go along, because I do have a whole lot of them that I need to um, keep going through to bring. You'll be going to Europe. Uh, to join Thomas Sparrow, who will be connecting with us from Germany. Uh, so we give you an idea what is happening there. Because in parts of Europe as well, their authorities are looking to ease restriction of movement. Why are they doing it? And how are they even doing it? Let's compare notes with Europe when we return from this break. Welcome back to the show. We quickly go to Europe. I'm connecting with Thomas Sparrow, political correspondent with our partners DW, who is joining us from there. Well, what's happening in Europe? There are plans to ease restriction of movements there as well. So, like I said, what's the basis for that decision? Why are they doing this and how are they doing it? Thomas joins me. Thomas, let's begin with the why. Here in Ghana yesterday, the president addressed the nation. He listed a number of things as the reason why he's decided to lift the lockdown completely. It includes the fact that we're testing more. And so we have this enhanced testing protocols as helping us to know where the people are, how many cases there are. He talks about how we've expanded uh, isolation centers and created more treatment centers, etc. He puts this together and says we have chalked modest successes for which reason he's lifting the lockdown we know that the, in europe the authorities they are considering easing restriction of movement as well why germany's restrictions have been much more careful so what germany has restricted so far we've already spoken but what they have eased is actually as of today uh, allowing shops of under 800 square meters to reopen. Meanwhile, schools are also preparing uh, different ways in which they can step by step gradually reopen as of May the 4th. So most of the restrictions remain in place here in Germany, essentially, that up to two people can go out at the same time, that you still have to keep the social distancing in place. Uh, restaurants, for example, are still closed. Museums are still closed and so on. So most of the restrictions are still in place. And what Germany and other European countries have been doing is cautious initial steps to ease the lockdown. And the reason why we're talking here of initial cautious steps is because, is because there is also concern that if they start to ease those restrictions too quickly, it could actually lead to people not behaving as uh, carefully as they had done before and that could in turn mean that numbers go up again so what Angela Merkel and other German officials have been saying time and time again is that obviously Germany can speak now of a partial success but that it is also a fragile success and that's why Germans still have to be very careful very responsible and uh, keep some of those measures in place although step by step gradually Germany will be looking at what can be done to get back to normal and today's is that very first step where those shops of under 800 square meters will be allowed to reopen. So it looks pretty interesting. The, the uh, German authorities are describing it as a fragile success, which means anything can happen at all. The president here in Ghana describes ours as a modest success. There have been mixed reactions. A lot of people think, well, as many people, I, I haven't done a scientific uh, a, a scientific test, so I won't be able to say uh, a lot of people, but there are a good number of people um, who are saying that this is not right at this time. We shouldn't have had the uh, restrictions um, uh, eased. 
There are people who think that this is the best because we can also look on as the economy collapses and people are not even, you know, adhering to uh, some of these lockdown restrictions uh, effectively anyway. Um, well, when it comes to Germany, what sort of reactions are coming up to the idea that let's begin to f slowly ease these restrictions? Well, first and foremost, Gifty, we have to say that Germans supported, or at least a majority of Germans supported the restrictions that were put in place because they understood that it was the right way forward, that everyone had to play a part in trying to make sure that the coronavirus could not spread as it had spread in the past or as it had spread in, in other countries. So many people did support those uh, measures. And in fact, that was also seen in Angela Merkel's support ratings. If you look at some of the polls that were uh, published, Angela Merkel's uh, favorability raised to up to 80%, according to a poll of the 9th of April for German public television. And 88% said that the German government was doing the right thing. Obviously, when we talk about easing restrictions, that is a very difficult matter because you have to balance, on the one hand, that desire to get back to normal life and that desire to also make sure that the economy is not as badly affected. And on the other hand, you have to make sure that public health is still guaranteed as much as possible and that you can protect as many people as possible. And that's why the German government decided to have this very cautious approach at the beginning to say, we will start step by step. We see that there is a partial, fragile success and as such, something has to be done but they will be reviewing this success in a matter of two weeks trying to see if these initial measures are actually causing the effect that the german government wants to have namely the numbers are kept down that the infection rate is kept down that death numbers are still kept down and that people are step by step um, making sure that they still obviously keep those restrictions but at the same time get also step by step back to normal so it's that dilemma that line that you have to keep between that desire to get back to normal and the need to protect people from the virus just saying how you put it that uh, it's actually been improving Angela Merkel's ratings I mean before this we know that they've had serious some serious political issues to deal with um, over there which has also affected her rating so it's interesting it'll be interesting to find out how this tells on our own president's rating here uh, but that's the ratings are not something that we often do but let's come to the how here in Ghana when we had the lockdown there were military officials there were police officials out there on the streets checking to make sure that if you are not on the list of exempted people you are not found outside even then people were still being found outside anyway what we're doing now we're told that there, there will be a withdrawal of these security personnel from the ground because of the ease in restriction on movement what is the how in germany I've also seen police officers here in Berlin, for example, go to different parks and talk to people if they are not restricting the restrictions that are in place. And you can often see uh, the German police, for example, at the weekend, they uh, also abandon and dismantle a series of parties here in, in Berlin. So that gives you an idea of how this is being guaranteed, at least how the authorities are trying to guarantee that people respect these decisions. When it comes to the easing of restrictions, for example, when it comes to the opening of those shops, those shops will only be able to open if, on the one hand, as I said earlier, they, are, they have under 800 square meters, but on the other hand, and this is particularly important, if they respect very strictly the hygiene measures and the social distancing measures. So in other words, that could be implemented by, for example, only allowing a specific number of people at a certain time in the shop or making sure that if you're standing in the queue, there's a specific distance between one person and the other person. Or also making sure that if the shop is too big, then you shut some parts of the shop to make sure that you respect those rules accordingly. So this is the way in which it is going to be implemented. If shops are not respecting that, then you can expect authorities to, to go and tell these people to respect them or if they don't then also find them this is the way in which the how is happening here in germany but it's also important gifty to mention that this is being also presented as something that is not only up to the authorities to enforce that it's up to people also to understand that this is their responsibility as well to make sure that the spread of the coronavirus can be limited and that's why authorities have been saying time and time again yes 
obviously we can make decisions but at the same time it's up to the people to make sure that they respect this social distancing measures that they do not go to the park if it's unnecessary or at least with too many people that they if possible stay at home that if they do not need to go to work they don't do so unnecessarily so these kinds of things so on the one hand you do have the police on the, on the one hand you do have the authorities but on the other hand it's also up to the people to make sure that they understand that this is their responsibility as well interesting how people exercise that responsibility we haven't seen uh i mean we haven't seen a clean adherence to some of these rules here in ghana i don't know how it is now in, in in germany but finally um thomas you say that the ease in the restriction of movement is for two weeks did i get you right on that Basically, what they're doing, what the German government is doing, is reviewing the restrictions on a two-week basis. Okay. So, first, they implemented the lockdown for a few weeks, and that was the deadline was today. And then today, for the next two weeks, we have the next step, which is until the 3rd of May. And, for example, as of the 4th of May, you will have the next step in those easing of restrictions, and that's when schools, for example, will be able to gradually reopen. The reason behind these two steps is, on the one hand, these two weeks, is, on the one hand, to allow allow different institutions to prepare for the eventuality, for prepare for reopening. So schools, for example, cannot simply open from one day to the next. They need to prepare also so that they make sure that the social distancing rules are kept in place, that kids are protected, that you have the hygiene measures in place. So this gives, on the one hand, these institutions the possibility to prepare. And on the other hand, it gives authorities a chance to see if the measures that are being taken are actually being effected. So in two weeks, the German government will look and see, well, was the opening of the shops actually a positive measure, something that led to those numbers mm -hmm. remaining low or even going lower? Or on the other hand, did those restrictions and the easing of them lead to the numbers going higher again? So that's the reason, those are the two reasons why we're talking here about a two-week process at a time. So in two weeks, the German government will, will sit down again and will reveal if they go to the next step of easing restrictions or if, in the other hand, they think that uh, the things have gone the wrong way and then they have to even make those restrictions even stricter. All right. We'll see how that goes. Uh, we're with you every week, of course, so we'll get to know whether or not it worked. Well, here in Ghana, we've not been given any timelines. We're just told that the lockdown has been lifted. People are free to go out there, but we're really encouraging people not to go out if it is unnecessary. Thomas, thank you so much for that update from Germany. Thomas Sparrow is political correspondent with our partners, DW. He joins us all the way from home in Germany, where he's working. And so, you know, how our situation compares with that of Europe. They're looking at a gradual reopening of the economy, gradual reopening of schools, for example. But they have given themselves at least two weeks to see how the easing of restriction tells on the number of cases that they have there. Here in Ghana, we have 1,042. If what Germany is doing is anything to go by, let's take a look and see, for example, in the next two weeks, whether or not the numbers decrease, increases, at what rate, at what speed, you know? So we'll be taking a look at that. But go on Twitter and be a part of our ongoing poll. Let's see what you think of easing on the restrict of the restrictions right now. We'll take a look also at the United States of America. There has been a banter for now, uh, for some time now, between President Donald Trump and some of the governors about opening up, not to, to open up or not to open up, looking at the implications for the economy. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo says hospitalization numbers for the coronavirus patients have been down for several days. He's arguing that the state might have passed its COVID-19 peak. He added that the data suggests a low number of nets change in hospitalizations and emergency room admissions for the past several days. And that New York has been hovering around 18,000 hospitalization. It is now at 16,000, so obviously a significant reduction there. Now, government is deploying drones for the tra transportation of samples taken from persons suspected to be infected with coronavirus for onward delivery to the various centers for testing. This was disclosed by President Ekufuado yesterday when he addressed the nation on measures being adopted in the fight against COVID-19. Government has also introduced the use of drones to expedite the transportation of samples to laboratory centers. On Friday, 17th April, for example, 51 samples were delivered from the Ominako Drone Distribution Center to Noguchi. Furthermore, we're introducing rapid results testing
to augment our surveillance and enhance contact tracing efforts so that we can quickly isolate and treat confirmed cases. From the 68,591 samples tested, we've been able to understand better the dynamism of the virus, mapped out its geographic footprint, and established current and potential hotspots. We've also been able to isolate and educate asymptomatic carriers and thereby help minimize the spread of the virus. So far, it has been established that the virus was imported into our midst from foreign shores and is being spread through person-to-person -person contact. The majority of persons infected in Ghana have mild to no symptoms at all, whilst a very small number have required hospital treatment, of which nine persons with underlying ailments have died. Towards treatment, we've expanded and added to our network of COVID-19 treatment centers, with the Ghana East and Bank of Ghana hospitals being 100% dedicated to the fight. In addition, we have set aside separate COVID-19 treatment centers at the University of Ghana Medical School Hospital, the Kolibu Teaching Hospital, Konfuanochi Teaching Hospital, Kumasi South Hospital, and in other designated regional and district hospitals. Last Friday, I was honored to do the virtual salt cutting ceremony for the construction of a 100-bed infectious disease and isolation facility at the Ghana East Municipal Hospital, which is being funded through a public-private partnership under the leadership of the Ghana COVID-19 Private Sector Fund, and whose construction, with the assistance of the 48th Engineer Regiment of the Ghana Armed Forces, will be completed in six weeks. President Akufuado there last night. So let's find out how this process actually works. I have on the telephone line now Daniel Mafo, his country manager for Zipline. They are carrying out this process. Hello, Mr. Mafo. Hello, Gifty. Good, good to have you. Good, good afternoon. Good to have you, and thank you very much for your time. Uh, let's begin with um, let's begin with how this works. Essentially, give us a mental picture. All right. Um... So how this works is um, um, we, we, we are liaison with the various health facilities um, that are within our um, distribution center radius. And um, they, you know, people are going to these centers with suspected cases um, so long as they meet some of the symptomatic um, um, profile, mm. should I, let me put it that way. So when they collect these samples, one thing that, uh, people don't know about the COVID-19 samples is they must get to the testing labs as quickly as possible because you, you need to keep them in a cold chain system, okay. uh, two to eight degrees. So um, because of the, you know, some, some of the remoteness of some of the facilities and where they are, um, a challenge was making sure you could collect samples and then sending them to Noguchi or KCCR in time mm -hmm. and in the right conditions that need to be there. So what happens now is we work with the health facilities because we are a much closer point to them. And then um, they, we, we obtain the COVID-19 samples well packaged from them. And then using the drones, we are able to get it from uh, Omenako to uh, Noguchi in about 32 minutes. Okay. And from our center to KCCR also in about 25 minutes for, for them. Let's take a look at how many test flights you've, you've conducted so far. So far, I mean, how many have you have you done so far? So um, we, we we did test flights, but we are actually delivering samples now. Just as um, um, the, the president mentioned yesterday, um, over the weekend, I think we we delivered um, in total about 56 samples. Um, okay. uh, five going to KCCR and the remaining going to um, Noguchi as well. So we've gone beyond the test the testing of the. Uh, should I say the use case testing phase? We are actually delivering uh, samples now. And how 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 many can be sent at a go with the with a drone? So um, it's it's not really 
limited by uh, how many can be sent. It's the number of samples. Um, from our distribution center, we have the ability to do up to um, 150 flights per day. And um, for instance, with about the 51 samples we delivered um, on, on Friday, that went in about four flights. But it was because of how they had been packaged from the health facility. Once they close it, we don't touch it. So if they give it to us, you know, um, with a number of samples in a container, we'll just deliver it. That's, that's how we, we right. do it. Well, finally... So if, if, mm. if you're looking at it from that possibility, we could probably deliver... Um, a, more in thousands of, of, right. of, of samples. Certainly. I mean, these yeah. are just swaps. So but, but which, which areas, I mean, from the remotest parts of Ghana, are you mainly operating from as far as bringing in these samples are concerned? Um, so the, the health facilities within our catchment area is what we can deliver. Um, as of um, uh, close of the weekend, mm -hmm. we had picked up samples from um, parts of Lower Mena Krobo, Okay. Um, parts of Suhum, um, parts of Setra East. So it's as and when, you know, the samples come up and then we, 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 we take them and then deliver. Right. Interesting. Um, but in theory, mm. in theory, we could pick samples as far as from uh, somewhere in the farm plains to even deliver. Yeah. Okay. We'll certainly be keeping an eye on it. Uh, hopefully this helps us in our response to coronavirus. Um, Mr. Mafo, thank you so much for your time. Thank you too much. Daniel Mafo is country director for Zipline. They are responsible for using the drones to convey uh, to the various testing centers some of the, uh, the, the, the samples taken for coronavirus tests. So how different has a drone service, uh, you know, impacted or how different has a drone service add, added to our uh, efforts in testing? Some scientists at Noguchi have been speaking to this. Started doing diagnosis for COVID-19 here at the institute a couple of weeks ago. <clears throat> with the sample volume has increased, and now we are getting samples from all over Ghana. Uh, we're very grateful that the zipline drone service is now in operation. Um, after a couple of test drops, we've actually received the first sample today from Suhum. We're looking forward to receiving uh, samples from wherever zipline can get the drone to pick up and deliver to us because this will um, speed up and facilitate. Uh, the sample transport and of course the return of the results back to the facilities where the results are needed, especially outside Accra. I think um, as we expand testing outside um, um, a Greater Accra and, uh, and Ashanti region to other sites uh, throughout Ghana, I think the drone service will be really very um, necessary to facilitate the transport of the uh, samples and of course probably also the return of the results, paper copies back to uh, the uh, originating sites as well. So we encourage Zipline to continue this excellent work and we hope that um, it will enhance diagnosis and help in uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, response in, in Ghana. I think that um, Zipline may save some cost in terms of those coming from far off places like Krachi, you know, they would drive all the way here, get here late in the night with just one sample. But I believe that with Zipline, then, you know, you don't have to put a driver and somebody at risk, you know. Um, the package can easily be dropped quickly without they driving all this way with just one sample and driving all the way back. And I believe that it's an advantage, you know, especially those who come from far off places with just a few samples. And um, so I think it's, it's a, 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 it, will, it will work very well, especially those, you know, coming from those places with very few samples. And um, of course, we can talk about the cold chain. Uh, the integrity of the cold chain will be kept, you know, as it, it's, uh, it arrives as quickly as possible. I think the packaging was fine. Um, it, the sample was well kept. Um, it had a ice pack. It had, uh, you know, it was well cushioned to, and well packaged to prevent spillage. And on the whole, I think it was it was a good packaging.
some scientists at the Noguchi Memorial Institute now tell you what's happening in our market. City authorities in Kumase had to dispatch traders at the Dr. Mensa area of the central market today. That's because they are disregarding social distancing protocols following the lifting up of the restrictions on the movement. Many disregarded protocols of the pandemic, especially social distancing. Some traders had to lose their words since they would not hastily adhere to security officials. Um, place popularly called Bolahu, and few minutes ago, the place was overwhelmed with people. A lot of them had come in to trade today because the president no longer ago lifted the lockdown and um, restrictions. So many traders and also uh, people who had come to stock up in their homes uh, trooped in in their numbers to uh, conduct their own business and their own activities here. But unfortunately for them, uh, the city authorities um, dispatched city guards to come and ensure that social distancing protocol and others are observed. I have with me one of these traders um, who wants to speak to me and we will be asking her what exactly they did to, uh, to, to, to um, warrant such action from the city authorities. Mame, anopay, mobile, yes, and you be what happened, and city. Oh, ne any power hana the woman say. Ka and fifty hano. One now omu a jumu won patano, omu ankolana, omu de nema so my tessa omu abe good fifi abe blue. Nani send it the eti Sanya uh my say a fe and trana. And fifi anana a dos rama a kayin yina. So she is telling me that um the middle area that um the, the pavement had been taken by um, some traders from elsewhere. They had come in from the central market proper into this place, displaying their wares in the middle here, and therefore they caused the congestion in here today. But for them who who are part of this market, they have their own stalls and tables here where they trade. So they were observing the protocols, but unfortunately, uh, due to the acts of some of them who had come from somewhere, they, they had to be uh, uh, made to leave this market as soon as possible. Yeah. During the um, lockdown, this, the people here, the traders here, were segregated into colors and they took turns to visit the market. Now that the lockdown uh, was lifted, a lot of people took that for granted. So now she's, she's asking that uh, this is implemented once more to ensure that social distancing protocol and all the other protocols are observed here in the market. So um, city, city guards who were dispatched by city authorities together with a few million military men are still in here. They are trying to drive away few of the um, traders who are still in. Uh, a lot of them will not go without a fight. So uh, they, 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 they are still here. They are doing their work and we hope that later there will be a clear directive from the um, city authorities on what they would do about the market. Now it's been cordoned off. The market has been cordoned off. But we don't know the next line of action. From Dr. Mensa, Bola Home Market to be precise, for Joy News, Nana Aljima reporting. Well, back here in the capital, business in the central business district is slowly bouncing back to life as the restrictions on movement have been lifted. Maxwell Agbaba visited the market. Here is his report. We are here in the central business district. This intersection is just about 100 meters away from the um, Ghana School of Law um, here um, at the central business district. The road behind me leads to the um, Independence Avenue. The one on my um, left-hand side is the Kojo Thompson Road. If you know this intersection, it gets very busy around this time, especially on a Monday morning. You find a lot of people, you know, trooping to the market um, to buy stuff. You'd also find traders trying to cut the attention of um, potential buyers. But that is not the case today, although there's some kind of activity after um, the lockdown or the restriction of mo on movement was lifted, not much of activity uh, is you know, happening here. Let me speak to this woman here who is selling Veronica buckets here on the central business district. Mommy, I'm free or no? It's all saying, what's your idea now? In some ways, yeah, yeah, because I'm young for four complaining, me and it's a handsome me. Well, she says um, in some way it is good, in some way too she cannot really tell. 
because she's been here in this market and she's seen uh, how people were, you know, struggling, the vulnerable people, um, how vulnerable, some vulnerable people were struggling, even um, getting food. She says sometimes the distribution of food, sometimes some of them do not get it. Okay, they suffer before they get the food. Just like you would observe, usually on a normal day, on Mondays, you'll find the stretch, you know, very, very busy with a lot of traders shouting, yelling, screaming, trying to draw your attention in a way to come and buy, you know, their wares. But that is not happening today. Mm. Okay. Mm. okay. Well, so I was asking her how, I mean, what it was like um, for her uh, during the lockdown period when she was not coming to work, you know, to make some money. And she talks about how it is important to save so that in times like this, you'll be able to go back to your savings. So. She's talking about how she had to rely on her savings during the lockdown um, period. You see, maybe I said, lockdown is a year free or no? I was saying, what's your year? I said, a year. Oh, a year? Mm. A year, mom, I'm going to for you so year. Well, she says uh, the lockdown that has been lifted is very, I mean, it's very good. Mm. Okay, okay. Well, she says the lockdown that has been lifted is very good, but she says that a lot of Ghanaians they do not heed to, you know, advice, even from experts. And she says that um, we should be careful such that, you know, the lockdown, the restriction of movement would not be imposed uh, again. Into we say a lockdown your own. Okay. Well, she says it was good. Um, the president, I mean, it was good for us to stay home um, so that persons who have contracted the disease would be identified in their various communities. Me. Okay. Mm. She, president, okay. One new one, a new one. We protect more. We have forward the hand sanitizer. No, we have forward it. Okay, okay. Well, she says um, it was good that the president, you know, asked us to stay at home um, because the um, disease is deadly. That's what she's saying, and she's saying that now that we've come back, um, um, they have come back to the market. It is important for them to adhere to personal hygiene, use hand sanitizers, and all of that. Mm. No, 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 Okay. 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 So I was asking her what it was like staying at home, not coming to um, the market to sell here, how she was surviving. And she was just telling me that she saves um, with a bank and so normally she would go there to take part of her savings. She also says that she worships with the Methodist Church and they've given them, you know, some food items. And I mean, they've given them rice and that's what she's been cooking. Coming here all the way to the Central Business District, what we observed was that a lot of shops, um, right from our office from Kukumlimle down to this place, many shops were still, you know, closed and locked. Yes, um, we interacted with some people around. They told us that perhaps it was because the information from the president and the announcement by the president came, you know, very late in the evening. So now the information is now trickling down to the traders uh, in this market and the many shops that we saw, uh, that, you know, that were closed. Many of the people we spoke to believe that as the days, you know, pro uh, as the days progress, as we move on to Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and the information is properly disseminated, many shop owners would know this and they would come back, you know, to come and do um, business. So we're very close to the um, Rollins Park. Uh, now we are actually um, moving to um, the other part of the Central Business District. We want to get a fair, you know, a view of what 
the market looks like um, today, what a central business district looks like today. We were here during the lockdown period. It was virtually empty with no activity whatsoever. Um, the only people who were allowed in the market, um, the only people who were allowed at the central business district were people who were selling food, who were also providing essential services. Now the lockdown has been lifted. What we've observed is that business is slowly bouncing back, but we do not have the usual hustle and bustle that you'd see on a Monday here at the Central Business District. So we're just giving you an idea of what it is like. So these are the empty streets. You can see the streets are virtually um, empty. On a normal day, both sides of the road will be blocked, choked, and parked. There will be bumper to bumper traffic. Cars will be moving slowly, but that is not the case today. So we get it closer just to give you a good view of the Central Business District, what it looks like um, just some hours after the lockdown was lifted. Well, we're here um, at Jamestown, very close to the Jamestown Police Station. From here, we'll be moving to um, Choco, but I have some of the residents here would we'll want to interact with them and find out from them what they make of the lifting of the lockdown and how their lives were, you know, um, impacted, I should say, um, during the lockdown. Let me speak to them and find out from them. Chief, you're welcome to join us. Thank you. The coronavirus is something that is disturbing us a lot. Okay. Mm. It's something that is disturbing us a lot, but we have to bear it because mm. once chaka, chaka, chaka. Is something that has come in, we have to I mean, mm. adjust ourselves and do what the direction that I've been mm. telling us to do, mm. we have to do it. Like washing your hands very well and then use soap <laughs> and sanitize your hands. Mm. We normally do it every one hour. Every nine hour we do it. Every nine hour we do it. We wash mm. our hands and then we sanitize it. Mm. So we have to bear it. It's very, very hey, chaga, 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 chaga. It's disturbing us a lot, but we have mm. to bear it. Mm. So now you can no longer pick four, um, three passengers or four? How, how many people oh, do you pick not, now? As of now, we can no longer pick four passengers. We normally mm. pick chaga, three. Chaga, go, chaga, okay. go, that is the directives chaga, that have been given chaga, to us. Okay. To pick three passengers. Mm. 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 Is that affecting your daily sales? Well, it's affecting us a lot, but we are speaking to uh, some of the car owners, to the exercise patient, if probably they can even reduce the sales so that we can also make it. Okay. So, Chief, what's, what's your name? Prince Nunu. Prince Nunu. What do you make of the lockdown that has been lifted? The lockdown make, make me lose my everything. Mm. My business go down. Yeah. My customer, the people, they don't come. Mm. So I make loose for the down. Okay. So we thank Abu Fado say release us. Mm. The way the police and soldiers did it, they beat me in my back self. If I show you, you can see. Mm. Uh, we take it like that. What did you do before they beat you? They said I should turn. Mm. And I said, why? I should turn. I'm going with the two, back to one. They say, hey, come on, turn. Mm. You can't do anything. Mm. So, on my, to tell no one person come from, hey, like him, I get away. It's a neighbor. Mm. I'm going to try to fight him. No, what my man don't work. You're back, you're in tune, you're done in back. So, you stopped working because you were killed by the. I have to stop working. Why? Because they killed me. Mm. If I come again, I will be killed again. So, I have to go home mm. and sleep. Mm. So, mm. anything they do, we take it like that. So now you're happy the lockdown oh, has been lifted? I'm happy now. But I have to take care of myself because mm. of the Bongombo tomatic cola fever to not catch me. Coronavirus you're talking about. So we are here at a fishing community um, here in Jamestown and uh, we've been interacting with the public relations officer of the Fishermen Association from here. Well, he tells us that in spite of the um, ban on public gathering and then the Ghana Tourism Authority ban on the use of um, beaches here, it's quite difficult to prevent the people who reside here from going to the beach. So um, he is um, pleading um, that perhaps on weekends, soldiers can be deployed here to ensure that residents are not allowed to go to the beach. He has also been talking to us about the impact of the coronavirus pandemic on the residents here of this fishing community. We people here, 
we accept the word the government has to tell us that we have to take instructions from the government. But who also is that the what affects us is who have to come and buy the fish here. Mm. If they are coming because of the malaria virus, they, so they didn't supposed to be come. Lucky also, the fish also is not here plenty that is forced to come. So that's the problem that is serious. And the second time also that because they didn't come, we have to use ID card to them that they should know that they also they are part of the fishermen because they didn't bond our fishing going. Mm. No. Safety protocols, as you say. Yeah, yeah. And at this place, everybody had to accept because I think last week Sunday about the Easter holiday. You know that the soldiers came here plenty because they didn't want anybody to be going inside and see mm. because they don't want anybody. But uh, one thing they do, I like it, that they, they are think they should continue because some of the time they see the people are painting the sea inside too much. And so I'm pleading to the government that side they are pleading that some of the Sundays they should let the soldiers to be coming out that so now we get it. We didn't get it finished. Mm. Okay. You don't need to go out there because we are here to go out there and bring you what's happening out there. And hopefully Max Olagbaba has done a very good job by putting you in the center of these public spaces, even though you haven't stepped a foot outside, which is a good thing. Let's keep staying at home. If you have no business doing anything outside, please, please stay at home. The more you move, the more the uh, virus spreads. This is still the pause with me, Gifty and Apia. Let's take a very quick break. When I return, I have more, including Frontline. Welcome back to the show and thanks for staying with us. You may call it crude, a crude means of hand washing, but scientists will call it appropriate technology. In the midst of the coronavirus pandemic, when a good number of people are thinking about how to survive the anxiety-filled hours without contracting the virus, a Kaswa-based cab driver has invented and installed a remotely controlled technology that allows passengers who patronize his services to sanitize their hands with soap and the running water before they get on board. In the following report, 36-year-old Joseph tells my colleague Latif Idris he'll welcome support to help him better the technology to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in Ghana. This is without a doubt a bad pandemic causing disruption to economies across the globe. But that same pandemic is bringing out the Ghanaian ingenuity as many Ghanaians are beginning to find ways and means to survive the pandemic. A typical example is this cab driver who has invented a touchless hand washing system in his cab in a bid to save and prevent the spread of the virus among people who patronize his service. And even before we get to speak with him, I want to give it a try. So let's find out from him how the system works. If you can start operating the system for us. So first of all, he's pumping out the water uh, to wash your hand. So we need to get the soap out of it so you pump the soap or squirt it out and then again you get the water coming out okay and then here he has a, a tissue paper that you pull out clean your hands Then he has a very tiny dustbin, if you like, also attached to the system. Before, once I'm done with this, I can now touch the knob and then get on board. Wow. How are you able to pump the water from the steering wheel through your whole system <laughs> to come out? How, how are you able to do that? The, everything by here is the power. Mm. So, so you turn this on, yeah. and then the water begins to come out. Yeah. So I want us to step out, and then you tell us how 
this whole thing is connected. So if you can step out of uh, the car and then walk us through. So there is something called appropriate technology. And this is exactly what the cab driver has done. He's come up with an appropriate technology to meet the demands of this time. So tell us, how are you able to connect the system to the steering wheel? Oh, the, everything they... This, this so where is the water coming from? Yeah, this time. Let's see, let's see, let's see. This okay, time. so this is where the water is? Yeah, this is the water is the water. And what is connecting the water to the steering wheel? No, they see the only fish. Mm -hmm. uh, fish, fish. So, but here the, the, the pump did the uh, garum. Mm -hmm. so the pump pushed the water two hours. Yeah, I'm gonna ask again. So how how are you able to connect the water to the switch that is connected to the steering wheel? Because you turn it on there and then it's, it's, it moves the water out. What is the connection between the steering wheel, I mean the knob, and then this gallon? Like this side, now I use the, uh, the motor, motor power. Mm -hmm. I use it to give the wiper switch. Okay. Yeah, so I connected from this side. You see the wire? You see it? From here. Okay. Yeah, from this side. So it's connected that yeah. way. And so, so I want, I'm still curious. I want to know uh, the connection. Okay, so that is it. I see the wire that is connected to it. Yeah. And so it runs through here. Is that yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, and then the water comes out. Yeah. Wow. Are you are you looking forward to the water, you see this this thing? Mm -hmm. This one is a chamber. Chamber? Yeah, the water come here then pull out. Okay. If I remove this one and the water become plenty, I have some small tip of which it come small. Okay. We're bound to upload this on our social media platform, so you take your time and look at it. Maybe you want to tell someone to tell someone. But before we go, let's take a look at Frontline. Welcome to Frontline. Today we have a very short session. We're focusing on uh, official dome and how they are appreciating the work of those who are putting their lives on the line, their lives on at risk, just to protect all of us from coronavirus. We have a message from the Accra Mayor, uh, Mr. Jay Soa, who has a very good message for those working on the front lines. On behalf of the people of Accra, I wish to thank our frontline officers who have been at the forefront of the fight against this COVID-19. A special thanks to the health workers, doctors and nurses, and all allied workers. Our military and police had done a yeoman job by maintaining high security in our communities. The media personnel that had also been all this while dedicated their time to educate and inform the citizenry how to act in a more responsible manner. And all other workers, including us as politicians, who have had sleepless nights and, and promised to serve the people of Accra being on the front line. I'd like to thank all of you once again for your continued service to the state. And I want to repeat what His Excellency the President said. These two shall pass. Thank you. Mayor uh, Mr. Jay Soa there, uh, you know, sending out a good a goodwill message to all of you who are working on the front line, including us in the media, including himself, he says, politicians, but most importantly, to all the persons in security agencies and all the pers to all the persons in our health agencies, we thank you so much today on the front line. So before I go and do uh, um, uh, Let's Talk Showbiz, let's take a look at our Twitter poll and how it went. So we asked the question, we listed uh, for you some of the reasons that President Kufado gave for lifting the curfew, uh, the, I beg your pardon, the lockdown. And we ask you whether or not you agree with government's decision to do so. So let's take a look at how you voted. So far, uh, we had about uh, 320 or so people voting, 332 votes. Uh, so 
43% of you say yes, you agree with government's decision to lift the lockdown. But 566 of you say no, you do not agree with government on that. Tomorrow, I'll try and go into the decisions, uh, the reasons you give for your vote. Some of you have said yes, some have said no, but unfortunately, we've run out of time. Like I said, tomorrow, we'll take a look at the reasons you give for your yes or no, or for agreeing or not agreeing with government's decision. And also, these are some highlights from President Kufado's address yesterday. One, what you should know, the three-week partial lockdown has been lifted, you already know. Social distancing must still be observed. Citizens are to wear face masks like uh, we did earlier on today. Schools must remain closed. Borders are still shut. Our borders are still shut. Ban on public gathering still in force. So you still can't have a wedding uh, in a group of people. You still can't have your funeral. You can bury people if there's still only 25 of you at the burial. Uh, service. Well, my name is Gifty Andor Pia. It's always a pleasure coming your way. Log on to myjoyonline.com. There's more news there.